Hello everyone and welcome to the Gumpla Network. I'm the Spicer and today's review of the Code of Akia Psychaichis or Upgraded Metabi is brought to you by those fine folks over at Canadian Gundam. Canadian Gundam is your one-stop shop for all things Playmo and Gumpla here in North America. With flat rate shipping to the US and Canada, a private warehouse option, and a vast catalog that's restocked regularly, they've got you covered in any situation. When you're checking out that vast catalog and placing your next order, don't forget to use the promo code GUMPLIN NETWORK to save yourself 10% off. So, my overall thoughts on this kit can be summed up in it looks great, but it moves horribly. If, that, if that's if you want the short and sweet of it, that is it. So, you know, I saved you the time of watching me ramble through the rest of this review. But, I mean, I will say this thing is gorgeous. I love this thing. It really... The color stands out. The size stands out. I love that you get all the different visors. The kind of guns and the weird beetle thing on it just really looks good. It makes me wish we would see some, uh, like, older 90s... Uh, tokusatsu stuff like Metal Heroes, Beetleborgs, um, Space Sheriff Gavin. I'm sure that probably maybe already exists in Figure Eye Standing. More Power Rangers. Like, if, if Figure Eye Standard's going a direction with Common Rider, I really hope it expands into these other places. Um, and, and that we get like the more master grade ones and uh, cheaper. But generally speaking, this Beetle thing, I just love this design. Anyway. Once you've switched out the visor so you can take a look at the mechanical detail behind the eyes, it still looks really good. I think the visor just adds to it. I do like the deactivated mode that it gives you that option. Um, and I've thought about changing that out, I'm not going to lie. But I've got this visor on, on my shelf right now. It looks great. I mean, as I said, visually speaking, this thing is awesome. It's different. It stands out. It's loud. It's not going to like blend into your shelf. It's going to stand out. It's going to hold its own against pretty much anything you've got. And we'll see that in a moment. But generally speaking, I think the visuals of this kit are really, really great. And they almost outweigh everything that I have a problem with from the build slash kind of posability aspect of it. If you're someone that just likes to throw something on a shelf, have something look cool or just different from your Gunpla... This is a great direction to go. The build's not overly challenging, but it is very satisfying out of box, and you don't have to put a lot of effort into really jazzing it up. But you can. It's a really good blank canvas. It's, you know, a very bright orange canvas. But if you want to throw a little bit of panel lining, maybe just a touch of paint here and there, this thing's going to kind of just shine even better. So, in particular, you know, outside of the overall visuals, what am I specifically talking about? Well, as we take a look at the head, you know, you do get the big alarm things on top, kind of giving that beetle aesthetic. And it actually looks really good. I mean, it, that is one of the things that catches your attention, because it just looks so out of place against a bunch of Gundams. <laughs> it's different. It's unique. If you've got other metabots, this will blend in a lot more, obviously, just from a design standpoint. But overall, I think this starting at the top and moving down is just a great start then you get to the head you will see a little gapping around the base of where the kind of beetle horns attach to the head and i actually think for these metabots kits the seam lines actually work a little bit better in its favor than it would want like a gundam because you know this is something that from a skill standpoint is about to be you know about the size of a a child right like a 10 year old or something so if a 10 year old is building this in their garage they're probably going to have fairly large pieces you kind of just put together so having these fairly noticeable seams i think is actually kind of playing more to its aesthetic and more to its design now i get that's probably just me making excuses uh and just maybe having something weird in my head that i'm like yeah that's cool but cleaning these seam lines up wouldn't be that terrible either. You have a big one that goes around the side of the head, or kind of around the side up to the top and to the other side. Then you get one straight in front right above the uh, visor. But speaking of the visor, you also have these the mechanical eyes behind it. And you have, they're actually grooved in. So they're actual, you know, panel lineable areas. 
And that helps bring out that mechanical detail. I really love that they did this because this is like one of the coolest things on this kit. Those eyes are great. Now on the box, it shows those as being like a blue color. And I did have a metallic blue marker, so I actually touched that up. You'll see it at the end of the video. I do apologize, not in detail, but you will see it and it's actually pretty noticeable. Uh, and it actually looks a lot closer to that of the box arm. Now, as you move down to the body, everything else isn't bad. The orange is a nice color. It's not too loud, but it is pretty substantially different from most any Gundam you're going to have. Like, even if you're putting it up against a bunch of Char and Atherin red stuff, it stands out. You do get the red on the chest, which is a nice way to break up the white and the orange. It has a bunch of little dots in it, so you can panel line those. The two, like, barrels, speaker, thruster things on the chest, uh, those are just on a ball joint, so they articulate. The X marks on the shoulders can be panel lined. They are not black like that out of box. You do have to panel line them or paint them, whatever you prefer. You do get the beige color down there in the elbows. Then you get the white, the orange, and the black on the forearms. That carries down into the legs as well. I do wish we would have gotten, like, maybe not fully rubberized tires for the feet, but some kind of different finish or a different type of plastic for them just so they stand out a little bit. But I know that's probably asking a little bit too much for a Metabots kit. So, overall, everything looks good. I think the head from a detail standpoint is where the shines but the body's not bad either now speaking of those eyes because these like i said they're just one of the coolest things ever on this kit they look really great and as you can see here you may have to be a little bit careful because they are fairly shallow lines uh so you can rub out some of the panel lining just be very careful on how you rub if you do go back over it a couple of times and you'll be fine it just like I said, be careful because this is one of the best things from a visual standpoint on this kit. I just love how this looks. Now, you also do have something on the back. It's kind of a gimmick. You do have like where the little coin inserts, the little back panel flops down. I will say it's supposed to snap in. It doesn't do that very well, so it can fall off. But this is, out of the things that fall off of this kit, probably the least irritating of them. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about that in a minute. But it is nice that you have the actual articulatable little switch thingy that holds it in there. You get the coin that you can put in. If you want to put a little bit of red paint on it, you can. It's a nice little extra. You don't really have to do anything with it, but it's cool that they included it. Now you get the gun barrels, kind of the main accessory. <laughs> it's not really an accessory to this kit. This is where most of your dynamic posing is going to come from. They look great. You do have the asymmetrical look, so one of them is stubby, like broken short, broke off type thing. I can't remember why that is. But you do get the full barrel, so if you do decide you want to do that, you can. No big deal there. And they are just pegged in, so if you want to change out and have the asymmetrical on the other side, you absolutely can do that. You also see the fist and the open palm hand there. We get a little bit of a different look at them here. Not the best look. We'll, we'll get a, look, a different look in a minute. But this is how they attach on. They're just straight pegs. They're just two pieces smashed together. And then you get the other hands. You get the outstretched expressive hand, the fist, and two gripping hands or grappling hands. You also get two tubes for the transformation. Yes, one of them is cut down because I accidentally snipped one side of it off. It's all right. I fixed it. Don't worry about it. Uh, then you have the three other visors, the one that is pretty much just like the other eyes, but just a little bit more expressive. You have the half-closed visor for the transformation, and then the fully closed one, like you saw at the very beginning of the review. Pretty decent looking. Everything on here is pretty good, but it's also nothing special to write home about. The one thing, kind of getting into the posability of this that I loathe about this kit. Like, as much as this looks great and I love how it looks on my shelf, I will never touch it again because of these elbows. This is a problem not unique to this kit either. From what I remember, the Wonder Waifu, the Kotobukiya Wonder Waifu, and the uh, Lacus Klein figure I standard had very similar joints to this that were slightly better. But this is just a PCA round 
soft plastic thing just on a peg and it is the forearm is held on by friction and there's another joint at the bottom of it as you can see there that gets just demolished it's not as bad on the other side but that left hand side there just gets tore up it is not good this has fallen off pretty much every time I've tried to pose it for this review so if you like posing things I hope you're patient because this is going to test you it just happens so often and having the other joint at the bottom just makes moving it around on there terrible now if you do this out of box and maybe you know coat this thing and like varnish or super glue to kind of preserve it a little bit and add a little friction that's not terrible but I do think that it eventually will wear down just because of how this design is done. I think if you would have gone for like a more high grade, double jointed, double sided like clasp thingy, that would be a way better deal than this. Uh, this is absolutely the single worst part of this kit. Now, once you actually get it posed after, you know, having the forearms fall off a bunch and getting irritated with it, uh, it's actually not that bad. You can throw it up on a stand. The stand does connect like the very back of the back skirt, so some stands may not connect well. But generally speaking, up on a stand, it works pretty good. The top half is going to be much more expressive than the bottom. Just due to the nature of the design of the legs, they don't really have like a knee. So they don't really sell that motion too well. Uh, but it's fine. It is what it is. Now you can also put it down on the ground and have a pretty good pose as well. It's actually pretty stable for what it is and that's really nice. You can bend the knee on the ground as well. It looks fine. Like I said, it's a little weird, but it's there. The gun barrels look fine. The top half, once again, really is selling this. But if you want to add a little bit of extra flair, if you're taking pictures of this and that's kind of your main reason for getting it, adding some of these effect parts like we've reviewed before and that I've used in some other reviews, really does it they fit so well in the scale that i think this is probably what they should have been designed for they work fine for high grades and real grades a little bit small for most master grades they work fine for like human sized action figures or human action figures but this really is just i think the best looking i've ever had these with anything so if you really want to take pictures of it or have it in a dynamic pose on your shelf, spending the like extra little bit on this is well, well worth it in my opinion. Now, for those grapple hands, if you want something that's not necessarily purely static but also have problems with posing it fully dynamically, you can do something like this and kind of find a middle ground. It is posable in a way to get the grapple hand over the fist, uh, you know, a little bit of sticky tack maybe on the inside of that helps a little bit in terms of bringing them a little closer, but you can do it, and it's not too terrible. You can move those little back things on the shoulders around if you need to. Um, kind of, you know, a, a tall geese problem <laughs> when they used to have the thrusters just attached to the shoulders. But overall, it's not that bad. They don't get in the way. And you can bring the arms around the chest without it being too much of a problem. Now, on to the second worst part of this kit, and the transformation. The transformation, oddly enough, doesn't make this unstable. I think it just looks dumb. The one thing I do like about it is the visor. It is half closed and has like a little slit on one side. I think that looks great. Outside of this, I think this transformation uh, just should not exist, but I also have not watched Metabots or played Metabots in like my adult lifetime, so... Maybe people that are more into this media like this transformation more, uh, but personally, it just doesn't do anything for me. However, you can absolutely add those same effect parts, and it actually adds a lot to it. Once again, if you have no intent to transform it and it's going to be on a static pose, this maybe isn't something you really need or that it doesn't do you much good. But if you really want to pose this around, take pictures of it, uh, or just have it in a dynamic pose on your shelf. These are really, really well in scale. Uh, and it could just be me <laughs> realizing that this is kind of the right scale for these. But that's uh, just me. Anyway, what does this look like on my shelf? And with a little bit of paint on the eyes. As you can see, up against a high grade and a master grade, it stands out. 
The coloration stands out. The height is just a little bit more than that of a high grade, but being the proportions it is, it stands out pretty good against a master grade, even with it being a fair bit smaller. It is something that won't necessarily hog the attention on your shelf, but isn't going to blend in either. It's a, it's a very good combination, especially if it's mostly up against Gundam and anime related stuff. So overall, should you buy this? If you want something that looks good on your shelf and you want a slightly different take on building stuff from Gunpla, sure. If you're wanting something that's fun to build and fun to pose, probably not. I will say though, visually speaking, just looking at it on my shelf as I'm recording this, it looks so good. Like if you want something just to throw on your desk or your shelf, yeah, this is a must buy. It looks so good. People will probably generally recognize it and you can be like, oh yeah, it's from that, that Metabot show back in the 90s and people will be like, oh yeah, I watched that, yeah. And that's kind of it. That's all it needs to be. If you really want to go hardcore on the posing and stuff, uh, I would probably look another direction. This is just not something that going from a Bandai kit to this is awful. Like the how Kota Bikia has not figured out better elbow tech is beyond me. Maybe they do in like some of the frame arm stuff, but here it is just awful. Not not good. Not good. Everything else is great, but this almost ruins the kit for me personally. But those are my thoughts. If you've built this and you have this, let me know in the comments down below. Am I just being a big baby about these elbows? Or are you right and these elbows are the worst thing since something that goes along with sliced bread? I don't know. I can't think of a good analogy. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Leave me some comments down below. Leave a like if you've enjoyed this video. And, of course, do your best to stay safe and keep on building.